Hello, hello, welcome and glad you could join me for another Airsim 3D C560 XL tutorial. Today's tutorial is going to be uh, to start the jet up from a cold and dark state. We presume that you've looked at a previous video to help us get to this state because there are certain things that you need to do to make sure that everything is cold, dark, buttoned up. As you can see, we have no pilots. And if we jump into the cockpit and start pushing switches around, nothing's going to work. It's all dark, not working. And this is the state you need to be in. So let's get started. So I'm going to do a couple of things first. I'm going to remove the yoke. Uh, by the way, the TCS buttons and all the buttons work perfectly so we can get a better look. The second thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this to the realistic mode panel layout. And there's a whole tutorial that covers this, so I won't bother to get into that. Now, in case you're wondering, the start procedure for the augmented panel or the realistic panel is exactly the same. So at this stage, you don't really want to worry, but I just want to keep it real as real as possible at this point in time. And the first thing you want to do when you're in a cold and dark cockpit, and we assume that you're a pilot and you walk right into the cockpit, and what's the first thing you do? You look for the checklists to start this jet up. It's a 95% authentic aircraft, so you've got to use the checklists. So how do we get to those? Well, getting to them is pretty simple, and the powered state of the aircraft doesn't really matter. And that's irrespective of whether the battery is connected or a GPU is running even. You have access to the checklists at all times if there's one thing that's done. And what you need to do is you need to go to the center console and turn the MFD power on. Now, what this does is if you look up here, nothing happens. But all we will do now is get power to the checklists. It's like picking up the checklist from the chair and you have access to it with nothing else working. So to do that, you click this button, which is the normal button, the normal checklist button down in the MFT, and now you have access to the checklists. And uh, well, you notice that it's fully functional. Now, the reason why I've chosen the starting to start us off is you don't want to do this, actually. You can't start right now because the jet is not set up to be started. So what you want to do in a cold and dark situation is first go to the pre-flight phase, not the starting phase. So let's do that. So we open the pre-flight phase. And the first thing we notice is that we've got two outside tasks to do. One is to connect the battery and to look at the stab alignment with the flap handle, check that. So let's do those two things first. The battery compartment, which is back over here, open it and if you look inside this is all very realistic and we need to push this battery connector onto the battery leads you can read the labels is exactly this is the kill switch for the light once the battery is on so we put that on over there now normally what would happen is you would close this and but I'm going to leave it open and there's a reason for me leaving it open and I'll talk to you a little bit about that in a second so we're back in the cockpit and I wanted to talk about the second task, the stab alignment flap handle check. What does that mean? Okay, so in simple terms, this flap handle over here needs to be in the up position and agree with this horizontal stabilizer position indicator here. And we're seeing that it's on the lower end position here and it should be on the top end over there and that's the correct place for it to be when the flap handle is in the zero position and also the flaps are up so the stabilizer position the handle and the flaps are all out of sync so we've got somebody left the flap handle down here and so basically that is out of alignment and we need to get that aligned before the jet is in a safe position to be able to fly okay so documents, handle, and control lock. Now this is something that's very easy to miss if you're not following the checklists. And the control lock essentially locks all the moving surfaces of the aircraft while it is parked. And we need to unlock it by turning it and pushing it inward. So now that we've got the control lock unlocked, the gear handle is down, the rudder, elevator, and trims are all in the correct position. I checked that. The generator switches need to be in the off position. 
So let's quickly check that. Oh, this one's in the reset. So that's why you need to be off and off. Okay, so that's good. All other switches to normal. Uh, all these switches need to be this one here, this one, avionics power, this needs to be auto, this needs to be off, the um, crossfeed needs to be off. Um, let's see what else. Okay, we're good to go. Throttles in the off position. Um, now, once we start the aircraft, once we get more into this startup procedure, there are a couple of areas that we want to be aware of and look at. So this, this is the start panel. This is the voltage. The voltage needs to be uh, about 25 volts. Anything over 23, you can start with the, with the battery. And if you have anything less than that, then you need to use the APU. We're not going to get into using that today because there is another tutorial on the APU, the generators, the GPU, all the electrical stuff all in one place. The throttle area is another place where we want to push this into the idle position. And the last area that we look for is the engine instrumentation up over here. So let's get started. So we are at uh, number 11 and 12. So the battery switch on, avionics on. I kind of kept quiet for a second to let you hear the nice little startup, uh, avionics startup sounds that we recorded from the real jet. And looky, looky here. So we've got some enunciation going on that's telling us, hey, look, the battery door is open. See? The tail battery door is open. And we've got the main door open too. We've got uh, some other enunciations going on over here too. So let's fix that stab stabilizer problem first. So we'll put the flaps up all the way. And now if we go outside and look, you're going to see that slowly jack screw into place. It takes about 23 seconds and it is the cause of the stab misalignment an uh, um, enunciation that comes on over here. But you can see the hydraulics are working also. Turn that master switch off. Let's go down to the panel and start the jet up. Okay, so a couple of things. Remember, we said you want to watch this panel, you want to watch the throttles, and you want to watch your instrumentation over here. So we've got everything else done. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and start the aircraft. So what you need to do is you need to turn that off for a second. So here's where you need to be. So for the port engine, uh, fuel boost on, ignition on, EEC to manual and then if we come back out over here everything still looks good uh, go back down and hit the start button I'm going to pause here for a second and we're going to take a look at the click regions in X-Plane and if you'll notice that each one of these green areas is a manipulator that allows a pilot to move a switch or push a button and since there are many switches and buttons in this jet the manipulators that cover them tend to be in close proximity to one another. Now this can be challenging when you're not zoomed in to know where the boundaries for each manipulator are. But essentially, there's nothing we can do about making these bigger because then this would, you know, this would crowd into the into these and cross over and you can't do that. And so the idea is when you're out over here is, you know, not to put your finger on the button like this because then it won't work. What you need to do is push the whole thing. It's just an explain thing, okay? It's just an explain simulator of way that it works. But I wanted to kind of talk to you a little bit about that because many people said, well, I can't get this to work because they've just got their little finger on it and it won't sometimes work. Put your whole palm on it and palm it, okay? All right, let me just take those the view off. And so now we're ready to start. So if I look carefully, I've got enough voltage Everything is set, one, two, three. Generators are off, avionics on, battery on, uh, crossfeed is off, control lock is 
off otherwise I would not be able to push the throttles forward and we are ready to go now so what I'm going to do is I'm going to be pushing this on watching this N1 and N2 and I'm going to push the throttle into the uh, into the idle position once I get over 10% N1 over here so here we go palm the start button good N1 push the throttle forward I'm watching this making sure it doesn't go up if it spikes uh, just hit the disengage button which is the center of the three start buttons on the starter panel now you see the generator has come online but it's saying that it's off I'm going to turn the generator on for that side great that's engine number one started I'm going to do the same thing just bring the sound down a bit so you can hear me we're going to do the same thing for the starboard side engine cross for fuel boost on generator off and hit it okay that looks good fuel on notice the <clears throat> the red lights have gone off excuse me it's telling me that the generator on the right hand side is still off everything is still manual so once we turn those switches to the correct position all those enunciations will go off turn the generator on and now watch the amp meter as the generator is about online the amp needles will show a jump and as the battery voltage climbs up to its normal 25 volts you'll see the amp meter needles track down to more of a normal position the last thing we need to do is come down to the center console over here I'm going to turn the engine sound way down and turn the PFDs on on both sides now the reason we are looking down here is because we are in the augmented mode of the aircraft so essentially this little switch over here makes this a reality mode where the EFIS panel is up front and it's not over here and you lose auto throttle and we'll cover that in another tutorial and this is the augmented mode which basically the aircraft is in the default state this is where this is how it happens where this the EFIS mode comes down to the central pa center console and you get an augmented mode panel over here with auto throttle now auto throttle is not available in the real jet but um, we provide it in the augmented mode and so the last task is to put the PFDs on which is these two little switches here so that's for the pilot side and this is for the co-pilot side so remember we turned the MFD power on in the first step now if you don't have that on and it is in this position and, you're, and you, you find that you don't have MFD power again this is the place to turn it on and if you turn that on everything else lights up so right now if we look at everything let's turn this master warning off the problem we now have is a couple of uh, annunciators over here which is the pitot tube heat which you don't want to put on till basically the last because it heats up very quickly so just hold that off until the taxi you know take off almost ready to take off uh, turn anti anti skid on now we've still got the door locked and this door seal done so let's go out there and do that right now so here we are outside close the battery door once we go inside the battery door annunciation is off that's good let's deal with the door now let's close that door and get out of here so here we are positioned in front of the door I hope you can hear me uh, if you look over here we've got door annunciation saying that the doors the door pins are um, the door pins are all open and what you do to close the door is you pull this handle up and and it becomes nice and quiet and the next step is to lock the door so we push the door lock over bring it up push it in the door seal inflates 
we go back to the panel and everything is clear except for our no takeoff. Now the no takeoff is flap pan flap positions and things like that. Now the other thing also you may quickly notice is that the rudder pedals are out of alignment and that's because the rudder bias that kicked in while the engines were off so just if you kick the rudder pedals a little bit they'll go into the neutral position the nose wheel will center and you're good to go. So there we have it a fully functioning aircraft from cold and dark to complete startup this jet is now ready to fly. Happy flying and we'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.